I'm Pastor D, and welcome to another episode of Pedagogical Perspectives, principles that permutate your paradigm or may just change the way you look at a thing. Well, we've been looking at the book of Ruth, the truth about Ruth. Oh, my God, and haven't we found some truths in Ruth? And we want to begin this Bible study, as we have been doing for the last few weeks, uh, with the prayer that the psalmist prayed, Lord, open our eyes that we might see the wonderful truths in your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, we, we're in chapter one, and, and my God, we've, we parked it there, and we've been having a wonderful time just in chapter one. The Bible says, in the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a man from Bethlehem in Judah left the country because of a severe famine. He took his wife and two sons and went to live in the country of Moab. Man, you could just stop right there and teach so many lessons. Let's, let's look at this because what I found is that the book of Ruth is linked by historical threads to the historical books, Genesis in particular, uh, Numbers, Joshua, Judges. Uh, there's a historical thread that connects them all. Let's, let's start with Genesis. The, the Bible says that Elimelech, who was the man that was in Bethlehem, Judah. He was in Bethlehem. The first uh, that we hear of about Bethlehem, Judah, is in the 35th chapter of Genesis, where we find Rachel. You remember Rachel, Jacob's beloved wife. She was on her way. Watch this to Bethlehem when her water broke and she, she was getting ready to bring forth her child and she had some issues and, 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 and on her way to Bethlehem in bringing forth her child, her son, which she called Ben-Ani, which uh, Jacob would later name Benjamin. And she died, died while giving childbirth on her way to Bethlehem. Bethlehem. So, and then the Bible says that Elimelech leaves Bethlehem, Judah, because of a severe famine. Now, I, I had to dig deeper because I wanted to know why did Elimelech leave Bethlehem. First of all, the people of God lived in Bethlehem where they worship the God Jehovah, the God uh, Yahweh, you know. Uh, Jehovah is the name, the uh, Latinization and vocalization of the Latin uh, or the uh, tetragrammaton Yahweh, and 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 that's who they worship in in Bethlehem. This is important. Watch this. This is important. Listen, place is just as important as person. In other words, where you are is just as important as who you are. You know, sometimes we're in the wrong place. I want to be where God is. I want to be where the God Jehovah, the God Jehovah Jireh, the God Jehovah Elohim, the God, the God Jehovah Shammah. I want to be where he is. You know, God plus anything is, is a majority. God plus zero is the majority. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough, my God. And so Bethlehem is a place where God is. And, and, and because they're experiencing 
a famine, Elimelech wants to leave. But watch this. As we go back and, uh, in history and connect to Genesis, you will remember there was a famine in Canaan and Bethlehem is in Canaan. I should tell you this, that the word Bethlehem, the city of Bethlehem is really, uh, it, was, it was named, it was a Canaan name at first that meant house of bread, it meant house of meat as well in the Canaan language. And it also meant house of war because when you didn't have meat or bread, it would cause you to go to war <laughs> in order to get something to eat. But uh, it, it, Elimelech leaves Bethlehem because the Bible says there was a severe famine. But Elimelech should have known the history of the people of God. In Canaan, there was a famine before. In chapter 42, and read chapter 42 and chapter 43 of Genesis. You remember the story, but you didn't story, but you didn't connect the dots to Ruth. There in Canaan, this is where Jacob and his boys, his eleven sons, they were experiencing a famine. Well, by this time, God had used Joseph down in Egypt to prepare for a famine in the land. And, and you remember that the uh, uh, sons of Jacob go to Egypt in order to get food because they were going to die of famine. But God made provision for them. That's why Joseph, hallelujah, glory to God, even though the brothers meant putting him in a pit, pit for his harm, God meant it for his good. And God meant it so that he would be able to one day preserve his people. And so, and so Elimelech should have understood because there was famine didn't matter because in Bethlehem, we served the God, hallelujah, of Jacob. And the same God that provided for Jacob through Joseph was the same God that if you keep reading down to verse 6, look what the Bible says. In verse 6 of chapter 1 of Ruth, it says, Then Naomi heard in Moab, now Naomi is in Moab, and she hears, listen what she hears, that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. I, know, I want you to know that you serve the kind of God that can turn things ar around. You serve the kind of God that can uh, violate rules. You serve the kind of God as long as you, that's why your longing should always be to just be in God's presence. The old folks used to say, he walks with me and talks with me. That's what God desires. He desires relationship. He wants relationship with you. That's what he wants, relationship. And so wherever God is, that's where you want to be, regardless to what's going on. Well, there's a pandemic, pandemic in our country now, but I want to know where God is, and I want to get there. Because the safest place, you don't hear me talk. I'm talking better than you saying amen. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. It's in the presence of God. And so look, they leave the presence of God to go to Moab. Now what is Moab? Now Moab, and really to understand why, they should have never went to Moab as again to follow the uh, historical thread of num connected to numbers. And look at numbers, the 25th chapter. Can I take you there for a moment? Come on, get your Bible out. This is a Bible study. Let's look at numbers, the 25th chapter. And look what they were doing in Moab. The Bible says, while the Israelites were camped at Arcasia, and one um, translation says Arcasia, 
grove, which is Shittim, some of the men defiled themselves by sleeping with the local Moabite women. Now watch what these women do. These women invited them to attend sacrifices to their gods. And soon the Israelites were feasting with them and worshiping the gods of Moab. Look, the Bible goes on to tell you how that God brought a plague on the Israelites because of their mixing with these Moabites, for, because they mixed with the Moabite women. Uh, there was a plague that, that, that killed uh, 24,000. Uh, God was angry, God was angry. Why would you want to go back to the place that where you had done things that had angered God. Uh, and, and so here, here Elimelech is going back to this place. We will later learn that Elimelech dies in Moab. Not only does he die, but after he dies, 10 years later, uh, his sons, Marlon and Kilion, they die. Where do they die? In Moab, in a place that, 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 that God's people had angered God by doing intermarrying inter inter uh, with women that took his people away from the worship of their God. You don't need to be connected with anybody that, and this is a lesson for women. I told you the book of Ruth is about, it's, it's a love story, but I think we may have the wrong, uh, the wrong uh, emphasis on the wrong uh, love story here. But, but what we must come to terms with is that God desires, when, when you're looking let me talk to the women for a moment. Can I talk to you? Come on, lean in. Let me talk to the women. You need to understand that the first thing that God gives men, give a, gave a man, before he gave him a wife, he gave him his presence. Whenever you, 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 know, you, you want a man, don't, 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 the first, first, the first place that you ought to find them, he ought to be in the presence of God. Look, look in chapter two of Genesis. The second thing that God gave man, he gave him the, the, the privilege of his presence, of being in his presence. And really that's what the word Eden means. I really don't have time to get into Eden, but Eden, it, it really means a spot, a place uh, that is uh, a place of God's pre presence. It was an open door from heaven to earth and, and God's presence. And so uh, Adam is in God's presence. And then the second thing God gives uh, man after he gives him his presence is he gives him a job. You ought not be looking for a man who is unemployed, okay? And, and then thirdly, God gives him the ability and every man he gives him the ability to cultivate. The word cultivate means to improve. No woman should be with a man that doesn't improve you. If he doesn't, you can, what does it say? You can do bad all by yourself. Who am I talking to? But God wants you to find a man that can cultivate and improve you and bring out the best in you. And so, by the time you get to the chapter second, the second chapter and the 18th verse, watch this. God has just paraded, paraded uh, the animals down Main Street in, in Eden. And, and, and he says, after he parades all these animals down Main Street and has Adam to name them, he says, he says, he says, man is, 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 is alone. And that kind of 
speaks to contrary to uh, the saying that man's best friend uh, is a dog. Well, I want you to know man's best friend is not and could never be an animal. Well, after he had spent the time with the animals, the Bible says in verse 18 that man was still alone. And, and I want you to know that if a man doesn't, isn't in the presence of God, if a man doesn't have a job, if a man is unable to make you better, he's better off alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. But if he has those things covered, you know, women go and get a, one, a man who, 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 who's not in the presence of God and try to pull him. I'm going to pull him into the presence of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need to make sure that you connect with a person that is already in the presence of God. And so, and so my point is, here in Ruth, Elimelech is leaving a place where the presence of God is. Even if there's a famine there, if the presence of God is there, the ability to turn things around is there. So what I'm trying to tell somebody who's looking at me now is no matter what your condition is, you know, sometimes, you know, instead of people getting closer to God when they go through adversity, they, they stop coming to church, they stop reading. It, the, the worse things get, the closer you ought to get to God. I'm telling you, God has the ability to turn things around for you. Well, we're going to dive back into this lesson real soon. But until the next time, this is Pastor D saying, let's stay connected. <laughs>